Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasa with the watchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly for price. I am tmasso at the watchbox.com. Today, we are discussing a watch launched in 2011 and now discontinued. It is the Grunefeld 1896 1 Hertz. 43 millimeters in red, not pink, not rose, red gold, 5N. The timepiece measures 13.1 millimeters thick and 51.7 millimeters lug tip to lug tip with a 22 millimeter spacing between the lugs. We'll throw it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters circumference. The Grunefeld brothers told me that they personally prefer the bigger watches. They like the 43.5 millimeter case, which is why they launched this 1896 case before the later 1941, which is a 39.5. So Tim and Bart actually set this as their preference. On my wrist, 16 centimeters circumference, you can see it's full-sized and boisterous. It's got a lot of presence. It's not terribly thick, though. That it is not. It may look thick, but 13.1 is fairly slender, so it will slide underneath the dress cuff. That said, I wouldn't wear the watch on the wrist smaller than 15 centimeters circumference, because I really do feel it pushes right out to the edge of my wrist. The lugs are almost overhanging. Take a look at the hardware and the software. As you can see, it is a conventional leather with a sort of gradient blue that varies in texture and tone across its surface. We have a sheer cut side, a slightly contrasting light blue stitch. On the underside, you can see bright orange, and it is a Grunefeld factory strap in brand new condition. Pull tab spring bars, so you can quickly and easily remove the strap from the case. And then we have a simple and handsome Grunefeld pin buckle. Note that it's both satinated and polished and handsomely branded. Jumping back to the case, the Grunefelds like their lug profiles. Both both the 1896 and the 1941 cases have expressive lugs. These are stepped out, so think Longo with a little bit more delicacy in the taper, the curve, and the downward tuck. Uh, this is a handsome watch, and it echoes some stepped lug mid-century designs from the mid 1900s, so while the watch is large, it definitely channels the past effectively. The crown has a dramatic wraparound knurling and a Grunefeld logo outside, and then you can see that the bezel has a vertical portion, then a little rounded lip, and then a conical portion. The bezel also frames a dial of sterling silver. So while it has a matte silver galvanized silver white coloring, the dial base itself is made of sterling silver AG. 925. You can also see that the second mot, or the deadbeat second, that is the namesake of the watch, one hertz, uh, it sits on an elevated bridge that is borne on little metallic columns, and you can see how it wraps all the way around, overlapping with the hours and minutes. We have a power reserve indicator, two barrels, manual wind, 72-hour power reserve. You have the deadbeat second. The Grunefelds use a unique setup for their deadbeat second. It is a second drivetrain. So there's the drivetrain that indicates the time and drives those displays. And then there's a second drivetrain for the seconds, separate from the hours and minutes. The idea being to avoid the variation in timing precision that can come when the train is also involved in the loading and unloading of the deadbeat system. So we have a separate train for that display and for the time. You can see the hands are fired blue. All the hands are fired blue. Their centers are mirror polished over a mirror polished pinion. And we have a dual mode crown. I can put it in winding mode right here. You can see I'm winding the watch. You don't pull this crown, you push it. Now I'm going to push the crown, put it in setting mode. Note that activates a stop seconds or hacking function for the deadbeat. Now I'm going to put it back into winding mode, and the deadbeat second resumes. Turn the watch over, caliber G02. The second caliber, created by the Grunefeld brothers after the monstrous GTM06 minute repeater, you can see that the bridges here are all made of stainless steel. Why? Because it's a feather in their cap. Incredibly hard to do. They show their Audemars Piguet Renault Papi pedigree, and they achieve three different degrees of finishing on each of these bridges. So there's the media blasting internally, there is the satination along these upper channels, Channels, the ridges on the top, and then the very edges of these bridges feature a mirrored chamfer or a hand laid bevel or anglage. You can also see that golden chiton are used for the barrels as well as for the train, and that's a nod to the pocket watch era. You can also see that the shape of the bridges is designed to echo the traditional bell gable roof of old Dutch housing construction and, and building construction in Oldenzaal, which is the hometown and the watchmaking headquarters for Grunefeld. The watch beats away at 21,600 per per hour, and it features a free-sprung balance with variable inertia or variable polar moment nuts on the rim. That's how the adjustment is done. There's a Philip 
Phillips overcoil that allows the watch to keep even and accurate time in any position. And then of course you can see it's all free sprung for durability. It is a single sided balance cock. And if you look carefully, you can see that there is a secondary escapement with a secondary anchor and pallet jewels that is used for the deadbeat complication. There's satination on the wheels, engine turning on the base plate. It is gorgeous. 39 joules and adjusted in six positions, all of that 30 meters water resistant. Reach out to tmosso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of this Grunefeld 1 Hertz.